Hi everyone, Steve here from Photoshop Essentials. If you're still applying Photoshop's image adjustments directly to your image, well, in this video, I'll show you why you should stop using image adjustments and start using adjustment layers. I'll show you why image adjustments are not the best way to work and why adjustment layers are so much better. I'm using Photoshop 2023, but this applies to any recent version. And you can follow along with your own image. I'll use this one from Adobe Stock. In the Layers panel, we see the image on the background layer. Photoshop includes lots of image adjustments that we can use to improve or just change the look of an image. And they're all found under the Image menu and then under Adjustments. And here we find options like Brightness Contrast, Levels, and Curves, which are mostly used for adjusting the tone of an image. And we have lots of color adjustments like Vibrance, Hue Saturation, Color Balance, and more. We also have some special effects type of adjustments like Posterize, Threshold, and Gradient Map. I'm not going to cover what each of these adjustments does because that's not the focus of this video. Instead, I want to show you that there's a better way to apply these adjustments. So let's start by looking at the problem. I'll choose Hue Saturation. And let's say I want to apply a single color to the image. I can do that by clicking the Colorize option in the dialog box and then choosing a color by dragging the Hue slider. I'll choose a shade of blue. I'll click OK to close the dialog box and now the image is colored in blue. But if we look in the Layers panel, there's a problem. The adjustment was applied directly to my image on the background layer, which means that the original colors in the image are now gone. And this is what's called a destructive edit because it made a permanent change to the image. If I was to save my document at this point and then close it, I would have no way of getting the original colors back. And if I don't like that blue color and I want to try a different color, well, there's no way to edit the adjustment. I could go up to the Edit menu and choose Undo Hue Saturation, but that's only because I haven't done anything else to the image. As soon as I start making more edits or adding other adjustments, the option to undo this adjustment is going to get buried in a long list of other steps that I would need to undo just to get back to this point. So applying an image adjustment directly to your image is not a good idea because it makes a permanent and destructive change. So let's look at a better way to work. I'll press Ctrl Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo the adjustment and return to my original image. There is a way to apply standard image adjustments non-destructively and that's by applying them to a copy of the image. In the Layers panel, I'll make a copy of my background layer by dragging it down onto the New Layer icon. Then I'll rename the layer Color. And now, with my copy layer active, I can go back to the Image menu, back to Adjustments, and choose Hue Saturation. And I can apply the exact same color adjustment. But this time, because I applied it to a copy of my image, if I turn the color layer off, the original image is still there on the background layer with the original colors. The adjustment was applied only to the layer above it. And because the adjustment is now on a separate layer, we have access to things like the blend mode and the opacity option. So if I want my adjustment to affect only the colors in the image, but not the brightness, I can change the blend mode of the color layer to color. If I cycle between the two blend modes, we see the difference in the overall contrast. And if I want to fade the adjustment, I can lower the color layer's opacity. And now the color from the adjustment is mixing with the original colors and not replacing them completely. But what if we want to edit the adjustment? What if I decide I don't like this blue color and I want to try a different color? Well, even though we're working non-destructively, which is good, we're still stuck with the problem that the adjustment made a permanent change to this layer. 
So to try a different color, I would need to either undo the hue saturation adjustment if that was still an option, or I would need to delete the layer, make another copy, then go back to the image menu, back to adjustments, choose hue saturation again, and this time reapply it with a different setting. So while applying image adjustments to separate layers is better than applying them to the original image, it's still not the best way to work because there's no way to edit the adjustment after we apply it. And there's one more issue we need to look at before we move on. If you look down in the lower left of the document window, you'll see a status area with information about your document. And if you click the arrow, you'll see all the different types of information that you can display. Choose Document Sizes at the top to see the current file size. And notice that we have two different sizes. On the left is what the file size would be if we flattened all of our layers, and on the right is the size with our layers still intact. Notice that by making a copy of my background layer so I could apply my adjustment non-destructively, I doubled the size of my document. If I delete the copy, the file size drops. And if I press Ctrl Z or Command Z on a Mac to bring it back, the file size goes back up. If I make several copies of the layer, each for a different image adjustment, we'll notice how quickly my document size is increasing. If you're on an older computer and working with high-resolution images, too many layers can start to slow Photoshop down. So that's one more drawback to applying adjustments to copies of a layer. Each copy adds to the file size. We'll come back to this file size once we've looked at using adjustment layers, which we'll do next. I'll delete all of these copies so we're back to the original image. So how can we apply an image adjustment in a way that is non-destructive, makes no permanent changes, gives us access to the blend mode and opacity of the layer, and lets us edit the adjustment after we apply it? The way to do that is to stop using image adjustments and switch to using adjustment layers. You won't find adjustment layers under the image menu. Instead, you'll find them under the layer menu and then under New Adjustment Layer. Now, not every image adjustment is available as an adjustment layer. If we look at the list of image adjustments again, everything from brightness contrast down to selective color is available as an adjustment layer, but the ones from shadows highlights down to equalize are not. But that's okay, because the ones that are available as adjustment layers are the ones we use the most. Along with finding them under the Layer menu, you'll also find the adjustment layers in the Adjustments panel. You can hover your cursor over the icons to see the name of the adjustment at the top, or you can click the panel's menu icon and choose an adjustment from the list. And a third place to find the adjustment layers, and the one I use the most, is in the Layers panel by clicking the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom. The first three options at the top are not adjustment layers. They're what's called fill layers because they will fill the document with either a solid color, a gradient, or a pattern. The adjustment layers are found below them. I'll choose the same adjustment as before, which was Hue Saturation. Photoshop adds a Hue Saturation adjustment layer above the image. Unlike standard pixel layers, which display a preview thumbnail showing the layer's contents, adjustment layers display an icon depending on the type of adjustment. In this case, it's a Hue Saturation icon. And instead of a dialog box popping up, the settings for an adjustment layer appear in the Properties panel. So I can apply the same color effect as before by choosing Colorize, and then choosing a color by dragging the Hue slider. Back in the Layers panel, I can turn the adjustment layer off to see the original image below it, which means we're working non-destructively. And with the adjustment layer back on, we have access to the layer's blend mode and opacity. 
so I can change the blend mode to color just like I did before. And I can fade the adjustment by lowering the opacity. The one thing we could not do earlier was edit the adjustment after we applied it. But with adjustment layers, we can. Just make sure the adjustment layer is selected and then go back to the properties panel and make whatever changes you need. Notice that adjustment layers also include a built-in layer mask. So if you select your adjustment layer in the layers panel and the properties panel is showing options for the mask, not the adjustment, it's because you have the layer mask selected. To switch to the adjustment options, either click on the adjustment icon on the adjustment layer itself, or in the properties panel, you can switch between the adjustment options and the mask options using the icons at the top. We can use the adjustment layer's mask to control which areas of the image below the adjustment layer are affected. So if I want the background behind the woman to be colorized, but not the woman herself, I just need to select her. And in Photoshop 2023, one of the best ways is with the Select Subject command. In the toolbar, I'll choose either the Object Selection tool, the Quick Selection tool, or the Magic Wand tool. Each one gives me access to the Select Subject button in the Options bar. But before I click it, I'll click the arrow and I'll choose the new cloud option, which runs select subject on the cloud for better results. This option was first added in the August release of Photoshop 2022 and has been carried over into Photoshop 2023. And then I'll click select subject. Running select subject on the cloud takes a bit longer but once she is selected, I'll switch to the layer mask on the adjustment layer. Then I'll go up to the edit menu, choose fill, and fill the selection with black. I'll remove the selection outline, and now the adjustment layer is affecting only the background. The white part of the mask is where the adjustment is affecting the image below it, and the black area is where the adjustment is hidden. Of course, you can always add a layer mask to a copy of the image, but adjustment layers include them automatically. Another advantage with adjustment layers is that you can add multiple adjustments and each one remains separate. I'll click the new fill or adjustment layer icon again, and this time I'll add a levels adjustment. The Levels Adjustment layer appears above the Hue Saturation Adjustment, which means I now have two adjustments applied to the image, and each one is separate from the other. With the Levels Adjustment selected, I'll go up to the Properties panel, and I'll drag the black point and white point sliders in towards the histogram to increase the contrast in the image. I can turn the Levels Adjustment layer on and off, to compare the result without affecting the hue saturation adjustment. And I can do the same thing with hue saturation without affecting the levels adjustment above it. Finally, let's go back to that file size issue we looked at earlier. Remember how with each copy of the image layer we added, we saw a big jump in the document's file size? Well, notice that even with two adjustment layers added, the size of my document with the layers is only slightly larger than the size it would be if we flattened the layers. In fact, if I add a few more adjustment layers, I'll just choose a few random ones, the file size is not increasing at all. So if you're on an older computer, using adjustment layers will not slow Photoshop down. And there we have it. If you're still using image adjustments, well, hopefully I've convinced you that adjustment layers are the better and more flexible way to work. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel to learn more about Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Steve Patterson from Photoshop Essentials.